for those early risers, uh, the field will open every morning at 7 a.m. 7 a.m., which I doesn't affect too many of you, but just note to selves, 7 o'clock you can get in the building, 8.15 for the clubhouse. With that, Aaron, thanks for taking the time. Who has questions for Mr. Boone? Meredith. Um, Meredith in the middle. Do we have, yeah, we have the wireless mics if you just, thank you. Aaron, you had the opportunity today to get your first official look at Garrett Cole throwing the ball. What was your impression of that bullpen session? Yeah, really good day. Um, you know, good for him to get here and um, to see him, see him put on the pinstripes and get out there and I, I thought have a very efficient day of work, you know, throwing, throwing aside, um, you know, 25 pitches. Um, and then to, you know, get to have a conversation about it with him and, and, uh, to see, you know, kind of him confirming all those things we, we saw from him this winter when we got to meet with him, um, just how specific he is about, you know, everything he's doing and, and just that understanding of, um, you know, every pitch he makes, what it's doing, what it needs to look like, his mechanics that are involved with it. Um, you know, his attention to detail is, is special. And uh, so it was a good first day for him to, to get out there and, and, and get on the mound and, uh, in, in a good uniform. Uh, front row, Brian. Aaron, you mentioned the conversation with Garrett. It seemed like he was pretty animated at times. What kind of things was he going over with you guys? What did he want to get across? Yeah, I mean, that's him. You know, you, you can get into a conversation about the, the, the craft of pitching and, you know, what he, so we're talking everything from, you know, how he's shaping his changeup and how he wants to throw it and, you know, what his arm action should be doing and where his misses are and, you know, we – it's just a really good baseball conversation with, with, with a great player that, uh, again, understands who he is really well. And, and those conversations, um, you know, are important to take place because I, I, I think they speed up the process and allowing us to kind of grow together to kind of hopefully continue to aid him and help him, um, you know, get acclimated, but also, you know, continue to improve in his game and you know he's one of those guys like a lot of great players that um, you know expects a lot of himself and 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 works really hard to continue to be great at his craft front row Bruce what does the addition of Cole mean to the rotation in general and to this entire ball club in your mind <clears throat> well he he's you know, arguably the game's best pitcher, you know, so we're adding a bona fide ace to an already what we feel like is a really good rotation. You know, we're obviously excited about Seve coming back and Massa and Happ and, you know, feel like everything went <clears throat> pretty well with Pax and know we're going to get him back and, um, you know, with Monty coming back and we feel like the depth of some of our you know, young pitchers that are coming up in the system that are going to start to, people are going to start to know their names as well. Um, we just feel like he's that anchor at the top that, um, you know, it, w when you have an ace, it's not only the greatness that they obviously provide on that day, but it's, you know, because usually they're guys that are eating up a lot of innings and pitching deep in the game. So, you know, it, it has that trickle down effect of hope, hopefully making a great bullpen even better um, because, you know, you're, you're preserving them and using them in roles um, that they should be in um, more often. And uh, we're just, we're just really excited to have him, and 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 it's exciting to see, um, you know, him come in here and know this is a place he absolutely wants to be, and feels like um, <clears throat> was a little bit of destiny him finally getting here. Andy to the right. Uh, Sanchez was talking today about some changes he's trying out to his catching mechanics. Mm -hmm. I know you, you've always been a defender of his yeah. receiving, but how much room do you think there is uh, still for him to grow? I, I think there's still a lot of meat on that bone. Um, and he's he's improved, um, I feel like, a lot over the last couple of years. Um, and we feel like, you know, with Tanner coming in and the work they've already begun, um, we feel like there's more there to be had. And, um, you know, him being open to it and continuing to work hard at that craft, um, 
you know, I'm confident we'll see the, those results um, as the season unfolds. Kenny, right here in the front. Aaron, did you see or read about AJ Hinch's interview with the, the network? I did. And the question about the, the devices got a lot of attention because yeah. you kind of talked around it. Uh, are you fully convinced that the Astros were not using any sort of devices in last year's ALCS? Uh, no. I mean, I mean that's certainly a, you know, one of those great unknowns. And, and certainly, you know, I've, I've spent time, as I'm sure a lot of people have, you know, wondering all the things that could have potentially been, been going on and, and, and probably will never know for sure, frankly. Um, you know, the exciting thing about it is, um, <clears throat> you know, with, with how Major League Baseball, I feel like, has dealt with this and obviously have dealt with it with a heavy hand. Um, you know, I do feel like it's something that will aid our sport moving forward and make our sport better moving forward. And, and that's kind of where my focus lies. You know, obviously these last several weeks has been a lot, you know, and we've had a lot of time to kind of process all this. And, and the, the range of emotions has been huge. You know, you're mad, frustrated, disappointed. Um, but you also know there's a time to move on. And there's, you know, I don't really dwell on the things that I, I don't really am able to control. So I look at it now as it's time to move on and look forward. And we have a great team in that room. And we know the sky's the limit for that team and we have championship aspirations. And so as we, you know, kick things off in earnest tomorrow, the focus is on, you know, eliminating distractions and, and making sure we're, we're in a position to start laying a foundation to be a champion. Do you think uh, Gary talked a little bit about, you know, mm -hmm. about the commissioner's conclusion about 2017? Yeah. And he had some, some funny lines and he seemed yeah. to, you know, kind of enjoy it. I mean, it, are you okay with, as each guy walks in here, like on day one, yeah. you know, letting it out and then moving on. Yeah, that... absolutely. And I think, you know, I think that's important. And some guys will want to talk about it and, and give you a lot. Some guys have already moved on. You know, I think, again, it's, it's something that guys have processed now for a few weeks. So the, the emotions aren't quite as raw. But I'm, conf I'm, I'm also aware that, you know, everyone – should be able to answer the question and, and be on the record about how they feel about it. Um, but, but at some point, um, very soon, it'll be important for me that, w that we move forward and start getting after it with, with that in the rearview mirror. <coughs> Eric and Christy. Aaron, I think it was after game one of the ALCS last year, AJ was asked in the, in the uh, interview room about some behind the scenes thoughts that maybe they were whistling or passing signs in right. some way, shape, or form. And he called the question and the topic laughable, which I'm sure you became aware of. Mm -hmm. Seeing things you know, retrospectively, does, does that reaction bother you, offend you, irritate you? No, because I know dismissive? what we were dealing with at the time. And you know, I, I know we were addressing things at the time because we're justified in doing so. Now, there's things that happen all the time in the course of a game where there's, there's gamesmanship where, where sometimes people are trying to get in your head or trying to make you think they have something. So you don't always know those kind of things. There were some things we addressed in that game that we felt like you know, were, weren't okay, we addressed them and, and kind of moved forward. It, it wasn't necessarily an accusation of anything. The reaction <laughs> was interesting, but um, I, I didn't really get all that bent out of shape by the reaction, frankly. I felt like we handled it the way we needed to, and, and our focus was on playing. Christy. What gives you confidence that this won't happen again? Um, yeah, I mean, that's a fair question. Hopefully we continue to put in. I, I think, frankly, it's been more difficult the last couple of years with some of the <clears throat> some of the things that Major League Baseball has done to clean things up. I think that's already started to happen, frankly, the last couple of years. Um, obviously, the penalty, the, the severity of, of and the repercussions of some of the, the things that have gone on, 
you would think would be a deterrent. I think they will be. Um, and hopefully, as an industry, we continue to get better at, at just being able to police things behind the scenes to where this doesn't happen. And, and I am confident that we will continue to get better and better. There's always going to be, and frankly, we're always looking for an edge of trying to, you know, you're trying to uh, decipher things and, and, you know, pick things up that the other teams are doing. You know, hopefully it's done above board from teams now. And, and I feel like this is a giant step in doing that. Right. Aaron, kind of an interesting offseason for you guys. Not a lot of additions. You lost a few guys. Yeah. Is, is Cole the, the missing piece in your mind? And that coupled with some of the guys coming back from injury, does that give you enough now to finish what you started last season? Look, we, we feel like we've been a championship caliber team now for a few years <clears throat> and, and have been knocking on that door. Haven't pushed through yet. Um, I, obviously, adding a guy like Garrett, you know, there's no running from the fact that this is an elite player, um, you know, and, and away from one of the teams that we've been competing with so so heavily. So we're excited to have him and, and know the kind of impact he potentially can make, coupled with the fact that, you know, we've got a great team in there of guys that are, um, you know, in the primes of their career. Um, and hopefully be a little bit more fortunate on the injury front this year, and, and hopefully that'll be something that shows up for us as well. But um, but we also understand we have a long way to go between now and even the regular season, but even getting ahead of ourselves to October. I mean, there's a lot of foundational things to be laid, um, you know, starting in earnest tomorrow that hopefully will put us in a position to, to make another serious run at this thing. James and Sweeney over to the left. Aaron, obviously the precedent was set that like management is responsible for like policing the clubhouse and the team. You know, the players were given immunity in, in the two investigations. Like, do you have to like go out of your way to make sure and stress to them like these are the rules? I know there was some gray area before in the past, before this was clarified in mm -hmm. 17. Are you going to go out of your way to stress that to them, explain to them? <clears throat> I mean, about that. Um. I don't know necessarily out of our way. I mean, I feel like, you know, we've been a team that have done things above board already. Um, you know, certainly make sure we understand exactly what is, you know, with within the framework of the rules. And um, I don't know about necessarily specifically addressing, but, um, you know, hopefully our culture is something that, handles those kind of things all the time with how we interact with our 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 players our staff um and and what we're trying to to gain each and every day sweeney right here in the front aaron you've spoken in the past about how much you respected aj hinch alex cora carlos mm -hmm. beltran how much of that has changed in the last two months um Look, those are still guys I consider friends. Um, um, you know, I, I've I've struggled, like I'm sure a lot of people have, with kind of making sense of it all and trying to kind of wrestle with my emotions and, in a way, get some clarity. I don't think you ever totally get there, and and that's that's okay. Um, um, you know, I think. As human beings, we all fall down and we all fall short, and none of us are perfect. Um, so <clears throat> there's always, you know, hopefully I treat people with a grace that would would reflect that. Um, but you know, I, I, it's it's been a little bit of a struggle for me and and how I make sense of it. Uh, Pete and Dan to the right. Aaron, how, how do you see your uh, number five competition uh, starter going into the spring? Is this sort of Montgomery's to lose, or do you see a little more wide open than that? Uh, you know, we'll see. Um, you know, Monty's, Monty's in a good place. Um, 
he's worked really hard this winter. I think him coming back at the end of last season, I think, was important for him to gain a little bit of momentum and, and for his mindset heading into the winter. Um, he's had a good off season. He's ready to go. He's proven himself at this level, so we, we know he's certainly capable of it. Um, but we also are very excited about a lot of our young pitchers um, that, you know, a lot of people already know their names, but, but also that people are going to start knowing their names. You know, a lot of the guys that we've added to our 40-man that we've been excited about now for several years, a lot of the high-end pitching prospects that you've been hearing about at the lower levels are starting to, you know, they're in camp with us now. You're starting to see them, and, and it wouldn't be far-fetched to at some point see one or more of those guys impact our rotation, our bullpen, whatever it may be. Um, but I guess my point is we feel like we have a lot of good options, and, and, and we're a ways away from making that decision. Um, Monty certainly is very much obviously in that mix because of his track record and because of where we believe he is health-wise. But we also want Monty to not feel like he's got to go out and win the Cy Young Award in his first outing in February. You know, it, this is a process, and, and we're trying to get individuals ready for what is a very long season. And, um, you know, when the time comes at the end of spring, we'll, we'll hopefully make a, a good decision. Dan, to the right. Aaron, uh, both of your <coughs> seasons as manager have ended against teams that have, are now have at least a cloud of suspicion mm -hmm. over them. That, how much does that bother you? Does that make you think about, you know, what, what might have been if things were different? Um, I, honestly, not as much as, you know, when I answered the question about kind of wrestling how I feel about it all. Um, you know, I feel like we lost. You know, we didn't quite push through. There, there's always that human nature of, you know, what exactly was going on. But I, I don't, it doesn't eat at me, that part of it. You know, I felt like we fell, we fell just a little bit short the last couple of years. Um, and I'm confident that this is the year we'll, we'll push through. Um, and looking forward to seeing um, how that unfolds. Brendan, to the right. Where is where is Domingo Herman, and what will he be doing this spring? He's in uh, he's in the Dominican. Um, I was actually, as some of you know, I went I went over there a few weeks ago with a few of our staff members and and got to see a lot of our guys. Domingo is one of the guys that came out to the complex, so I got to see him for the first time since all this has gone down and talk to him. Um, so the the plan is for him not to be here during spring training as of right now. I, I guess that could possibly change, but as of right now, we're not planning on him being here. With you know the <laughs> fact that the earliest he could be back with us is in June. Um, so we feel like, you know, the work he's able to get in over there, he's, he's been going to our complex now a few times a week for, I think, the last three or four weeks. Um, you know, feel like he can get the work he needs to, to get in there, and, and that's kind of where we're at on it right now. Do you worry about him being in the distraction situation? No, not worried about the distraction part of it, but j just the – you know, as I, I think as an organization right now, we've kind of decided that it's best for him to be there right now. We're, we feel like he's able to get the work he needs to get in there and, and then hopefully put himself in a position when the time comes to, to start ramping up and hopefully join us at some point. Buster, to the right. Aaron, you've talked about the emotion about the Astros and sort of the reaction to it. Um, how do you think those games will be against them this year? And I know they're later. Right, but especially in Yankee Stadium. Um, yeah, when I don't. When do we play the uh, September. September? I think we play them in May in Houston. I think it, it, it's going to be an interesting, I'm sure, season um, for them. I'm, I'm sure the reaction is going to be, you know, a story everywhere they go, and who knows how it all plays out. Um, you know, but at that point in the season. You know, it depends where the two clubs are. I mean, there's, 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 it's certainly conceivable, you know, that us and them could be fighting for a spot in the playoffs, you know, so those could be 
you would expect very important games. Um, what the reaction will be, who knows? I mean, it'll be, I'm sure, interesting and in and in, in a storyline all season long for them. Uh, Jack in the back and then James to the left. Aaron, one of the themes last year when you faced the Astros in October was how long your relationship dates back with Hinch, back to when you guys were teenagers. Yeah. Have you had any communication with him individually? And if not, is there a desire for you to have a discussion with him? Um, I texted with him um, right when the news broke, um, you know, maybe the couple days after that. Um, I, I sent him a text message. He texted back. I have not spoken to him, though, since. Um, uh, yeah, at some point, um, I just haven't necessarily been ready to go there. James to the left. Um, I know you when you when you're Dominican. I know you also met with Miguel. Like, what what makes you think that he is capable of of handling a multi-positional role? Like, why 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 do that? Why you know give him that task? This right. Year? Um, <clears throat> first of all, his openness, I think, to do it is is one of the things that we liked um you know when we first broached the subject with him he was excited about it and even told us he had started to do some things on his own um feel like he has the athletic ability to do it um to be able to move around and you know hopefully add to his versatility and you know with the quality and the depth of our roster um you know it could be something that that's important not only for him but potentially for us too to have those moving parts and so you know part of this is out of out of need because we have a lot of really good players that are capable and and um you know I know Miggy's going to work work his tail off at it and you know hopefully it's something that um can add to his value you know because there's no denying obviously what a what a special bat he is uh, Andy and then Brian. You talked earlier about at a certain point soon your players need to move on from mm -hmm. thinking about this Astro stuff. How much did you personally have a role in over the off season helping them deal with their feelings about this? Obviously, guys are texting each other videos, yeah. tweeting about stuff. You, did you talk and text with a lot of guys through this? Yeah, yeah. I've texted and talked quite a bit with guys. And, you know, a lot of times you just kind of raw emotion and talking through it and what you're honestly feeling at the moment. And I think that's important and healthy. And um, I want guys to, to be able to express themselves on it and kind of make sense of it for themselves. Um, but there is, there is a point where, you know, and, and I may or may not need to address it. You know, my hope is that, you know, I, I know you guys are going to ask those questions of guys. You guys have already done that with some of our guys. And, you know, they're going to answer it, you know, but at some point it is we got to lock in on we got too much at stake um, moving forward um, to have to have it just be this distraction that, you know, you know, brings any anger or disappointment into our room. You know, we don't want that kind of culture. It's it's full throttle forth on 2020. Has the player anger about this, both with the Yankees players and league-wide surprised you at all, or is it the kind of reaction you'd expect of a, a scandal this big? No, I, I, no, I, I think it's, I think it's very understandable. Um, you know, we're playing for a lot, you know, and, and some guys have potentially been intimately in, impacted, and so th those emotions are going to be strong. Brian. Do you have an idea of how much you want Stanton to play defensively in left field? And is he fully healthy coming into spring training? Yeah, confident he's healthy. Um, not sure yet on what that'll look like about games. Um, you know, kind of de depends a lot on the day's matchups, you know, health of our roster, who's playing well, who's earned certain playing time. So does he fit in more that day as a DH in left field and right, whatever it may be. Um, confident he's healthy. Um, you know, I do think there'll be a fair amount of DH days for Giancarlo, probably even best case scenario if, if everything's working out and, you know, we have a lot of good 
people to put put in the field. Um, but certainly feel good about him playing the outfield and feel like he, he'll be healthy enough to do that on, on a regular basis if we need it. Take a couple more, Sweeney. <clears throat> From what you know about Paxton's injury and surgery, how confident are you that you yeah. get him back sometime in May or June or whatever? Yeah, uh, the early returns are good. Um, you know, he's, he's getting around here uh, pretty good right now. Um, I, I, I think... <laughs> When did he have, have it last Friday? No, Wednesday. So he's probably been about six six days out right now, and I think early returns are – it went really well. He's moving how it should. So at this point, you know, obviously we've got a ways to go, but at this point feeling like, uh, you know, the, the timeline should be a good one for him. I, I think he's at least a couple more weeks. I, I, I feel like it's a three or four week before he starts throwing, so – um, but feel like he's probably on that timeline. I'll take Lindsay and Bruce to end it. <clears throat> Can you walk us through the timeline with Paxton's back and why the surgery ultimately took place so late in the off season? Yeah, so <clears throat> I think it goes back to um, the, his last regular season start in Texas where he kind of felt it. And it was at the time it was something that we felt like, and he felt like, you know, initially wanted to stay in the game. It felt like he probably could have, you know, powered through, but obviously at that point in the season and, we're, you know, with the playoffs next week, we were, like, not not messing around. So we got him out of there. He was obviously able to to uh, to pitch and pitch well in the postseason. Um, and then, you know, as the winter went on, you know, it was something that was bugging him a little bit, but not to the point <coughs> where, you know, certainly we didn't, think surgery but it was something that he was just dealing with and he was able to do his his workouts and his exercises and he was throwing so just getting more and more tests done and specialists getting involved um you know it, it eventually graduated to a point where he got the the last injection you know three or four or five weeks ago um and there was some confidence that that would probably be something that would do the trick um, and I think he, he saw the improvements from that. He was throwing again, but there was still that lingering issues that he was having. At that point, he, us, I think everyone decided, okay, let's go ahead and get this knocked out. Feel like, you know, I think it was uh, removing that cyst would be, you know, obviously something that's going to cost him a little bit of time, but something that hopefully um, puts an end to it. And it's not something that he has to kind of grind through all year. And Lindsay, just to follow up on that, we were following the protocols of the doctors yeah. who were employing what, what should be done with Paxton. Bruce, do you have a last one? New everyday position for one of your star players, Glaber Torres, uh, at age 23. How do you think he'll respond? What are you looking for from him? I think he'll respond well. He's he's. Uh, He's had a decent start to his big league career. You know, he's kind of handled everything uh, that's been thrown his way and then some. Um, I think he's really excited to, in a way, go home, you know, to his natural position where he's always played. Um, you know, I think I think that, and you guys have heard me talk about this with Glaber, the thing that continues to get me excited, and, and 23 is a young man, obviously, but um, just his – his intelligence and his continued um, improvements from from day one that he got to the big leagues to now, you know, just the maturity that he's um, developed within his game, within his routine, within the way he prepares, the seriousness with which he takes his off-season preparation. Um, so, you know, I think the only thing he has left now to do is to go show that he's capable of, Doing, being an everyday sh shortstop for an entire season, uh, we know he can handle it. But now it's just going and 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 doing the routine all the time, and confident he'll take that next step. Okay, Aaron, thank you, Clubhouse.